one of the things that we can talk about for a sequence is what is the limit of that sequence. And when we talk about the limit of a sequence, really what we're talking about is what happens to a sub n as um, n approaches infinity. So I actually noticed just now as I was looking at this, this, this is still right. When we talk about a function, it's f of x as x approaches infinity. Um, if we can write this sequence as a function of n, then it would be the limit as n, not as x, but as n approaches infinity. We want to know if that last term, if that infinite term, the, the, uh, the last term as, as n approaches infinity, approaches some specific value. Right? And they have the same properties as functions, so once we have these sequences written in, in a kind of a function form in terms of n, it's the exact same thing as we did uh, back in chapter one when we were looking at, at uh, limits. So there's two types of problems we get here. One is we, we are given the sequence defined in terms of n, and the other we have to, uh, we're given the first few terms and we have to discover the pattern and write the rule in terms of n on our, on our own and then find the limit. So we're going to run through several examples. They're, they're pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to take too much time to do them. But um, So if we, if we look at this sequence, we're given the first few uh, terms, you can see that the numerator remains 1 every time. And the denominator gets smaller. Or I'm sorry, the denominator gets larger, so the overall value of the function, or the overall value of the terms, gets smaller and smaller. Right, so we could write this as 1 half uh, raised to the n minus 1 power. And we can really just see by looking at this that uh, the larger our n value, the smaller our um, uh, last term is going to become. So eventually we are going to approach 0 as that, as that term, uh, the denominator, approaches infinity. The next one we have. Uh, a very similar looking sequence, except this time we have an alternating sign. So we have a positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And the only difference here is that now we're raising negative one half to the n minus one, which again gives us that alternating sign. When we raise it to an even power, we get a positive term. When we raise negative one half to an odd power, then we get a negative term. This limit still approaches zero, even though the values are alternating. They're still getting, the absolute values are getting closer and closer, uh, are getting smaller and smaller, so the values are getting closer and closer to zero. We can have a geometric sequence where we have a sub n defined as 3 fifths to the n. Um, and in this case, our r value is less than 1, or the absolute value of the r value is less than 1. So we know that this geometric sequence is going to converge to 0. Here we have a geometric sequence where r is greater than 1. So e each time we're moving on to the next n, we're multiplying by 5 thirds, which makes each of the terms larger than the previous term. So that diverges. It does not approach um, any specific value. We could have a sequence defined as sine of n. And we know that the sine of n does not have a limit as n approaches infinity because it oscillates and um, uh, changes its value. It never approaches a specific value. So here we have a sub n defined as 3n plus 2 over 5n minus 1. We know that this limit, if I were to divide numerator and denominator by the highest power of n, um, or I can use L'Hopital's rule, because I have here, by direct substitution, I'll have infinity over infinity. So if I take the derivative of both of those, I get 3 fifths. So this sequence converges to 3 fifths. Next one, I have 3 plus a negative. 1 to the n. Um, in this case, this sequence just oscillates back and forth from 2 to 4 to 2 to 4 to 2 to 4 to 4. 
um, as we use even and odd powers of that negative 1. We look at this sequence, it's defined as ln of n over n. And here I would get uh, infinity over infinity if I use direct substitution. So instead I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule. So uh, this should be in, not an x, but an n, 1 over n. And the derivative of n is 1. So I have 1 over n over 1. And as n approaches infinity, I would get a 0 for my numerator. So this sequence converges to 0 using L'Hopital's rule. All right, so here's here's uh, this one might be a little bit new. We have a factorial. All right, so I have n plus one factorial over n plus three factorial. All right, the way I want to think about this is I want to take the limit as n approaches infinity, but if I just use direct substitution, I'm not gonna it's not gonna tell me anything there. I just have infinity over infinity. So instead, the n plus one. I notice the n plus three. If I think about what the definition of um, factorial is it's going to be n plus 3 times n plus 2 so the next smaller integer times n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 etc n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 etc so these all those terms following the n plus 1 in the numerator and the denominator all cancel out so all I'm left with is 1 over the n plus 3, n plus 2. And now I can see as n approaches infinity, that denominator is going to grow larger and larger and larger, infinitely large. So my limit is going to uh, be 0 there. All right, in, a, in a similar way, we have here n plus 1 factorial over n factorial. So I can rewrite that as n plus 1 times n factorial because really it would be n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. This denominator is just n factorial. So the n factorials cancel out. Now I'm looking at the limit of n plus 1 as n approaches infinity. And obviously, as, as uh, just by direct substitution, I can see that that's going to be infinity itself. And therefore, I'm not going to have a converging sequence here. The sequence is going to diverge.